Okay, so this is lab number five, and we're being we're gonna be in SPSS again, and we're looking at um, creating sample SPS files. You know how to access that um, frequency distributions, and then percentile ranks. Okay, so frequency command is really useful when mean is not useful, meaning when we're working with data that is more nominal and ordinal in nature. And um, it does more than just calculate the mean for us. It also helps us with um, the skew, right? So is it positively skewed or negatively skewed? Um, it helps place out um, outliers and also can do percentile ranks. Um, so the output really does include the number of occurrences. Um, it works best with a small number of values and the percentages can be either valid percentages or cumulative percentages. And what the, what the output is really trying to do is it, it's an indicator of both the number of cases and the percentage of the cases with that value. Now keep in mind that um, SPSS will run any command that you ask it to, um, so just be careful on you know, your, your scales of measurement. Um, let's see here. So the frequency command is useful for describing samples, like I mentioned, when the mean is not um, useful, when we use nominal ordinal scales. It's also a really good method for getting a feel for our data, right? It provides more than just this average um, score, this mean or standard deviation. Like I mentioned, it can do skew and ranks and things like that. Um, cumulative percentiles and percentages are valid only for data that's measured on at least an ordinal scale, so you really can't do anything with nominal scales there. And because the output contains one line for each value of the variable, this command really works best on variables with relatively smaller numbers of um, smaller number of values. And the frequency command produces output that includes that includes both right the number of cases and then the percentages. Okay, so SPSS has a bank of sample data that we have access to. If you're um, accessing, accessing through um, the PERC lab or um, your SPSS, you can always access the sample data. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can open up the car sales file either um, through the file I saved for you or directly through SPSS. And so here's some screenshots of me accessing it through the um, directly through um, IBM through <laughs> SPSS. But I also saved it as a .sav file for you in. Um, in your lab section where it says like data for week number so and so. Okay, so again, this file can be found in your weekly data section or in the welcome dialog box. If you didn't click the little thing that says don't ever show this box again, you click on sample files and you can scroll through um, the different sample files they have there available for you. Okay, um, let's see. So what, um, what we need to do then is um, start the frequency command. So you go up to analyze and you click on descriptive statistics and then you click on frequencies. This is after you already have your car sales um, file up and running for you. So analyze descriptive statistics and frequencies. Okay, and this should open up a new little dialog box for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, well, we're gonna have the um, variable of manufacturer go over, right? So, and you can click any um, one you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use um, price in thousands later too. So you can click on any variable you want, click it over to the variable view, and then um, click on statistics. All right. Um, so when you do the output, sorry, I think I'm a little fast there. So transfer the ma manufacturer one over, just like using the purple arrow like we did before. Make sure the display frequency box is checked. Normally it is, but just um, make a make a note that you definitely check that before you um, clicked OK. Okay. So you have the output report here. Um, it's in two sections. The first section is more of a record of um, like what kind of data is, is valid. So here we have 157 that, that's, um, that's valid with no missing. And then at the bottom there we have um, the frequencies, right? So you really have five columns. And the first one is the list of cars alphabetically. So you start up here with Acura down to Audi and BMW all the way through down to um, Volvo. And the second one is the frequency of each value, right? So how many times did those cars come up? So they were like in this sample data, you had 11 Dodges and three Hyundai, Hyundais <laughs> and then six Lexus, right? So the frequency of each value. The third column is the percentage of all the records. Now this will include any kind of missing data. Now the fourth one is all the percentages of the records um, without missing data. The fifth one is the cumulative percentage um, or percentile ranks. So um, what kind of, 
count what percentage overall uh, were, were those cars, right? And it should go all the way up to um, 100, right? That's right. So it, it's a little bit wonky because we're using things that are more nominal in nature. So it's not that like Volvo or Volkswagen, you know, out car Buicks and Cadillacs. It's just because we sorted it alphabetically, the cumulative percentage keeps carrying all the numbers there and it adds up to 100%. <clears throat> okay, so we can also determine the number of descriptive statistics and um, a variety of percentile ranks. So we're talking about like quart quartiles here, cut points, and scores corresponding to a specific rank. So let's focus on the variable of price. Okay, so that's the new one we're going to do. Okay, so again, you open up a dialog box or open up um, your analyzed descriptive statistics and frequencies. That's going to open up a new dialog box for you. Um, and so this time we're going to do sales in thousands, right? So you have to kind of scroll through the different variables on the left-hand side here that you can choose from. And we want sales in thousands, and you do a purple arrow. It goes over. And then under options, so, um, so after you click on... So really quick, so the statistics dialog box is really useful. Um, and the central tendency and dispersion sections of it, so it's going to be coming up, is useful in calculating values such as median and mode that can't really be calculated with the descriptives command. So um, we're kind of talking about a couple different things here. Okay, so once you have the statistics up, so again, you're just going to click on options and then statistics, right? So you have it up here, and you're going to click on quartiles and... Um, percentage and you're gonna go like 80% and also click mean and median there uh, and then for percentiles you enter in whatever kind of desired percentile you want if you want 60th percentile or 50th percentile whatever that is right and remember keep in mind the percentile is how many people are below that so if you're looking at the 80th percentile in a class what you're saying is if Susie is in the 80th percentile she beat 80% of her fellow students and only 20% of her um, fellow students beat her so she's the 80th she's like the 80th percentile marker if you will so you click um, quartiles and percentages percentiles and you add in like whatever kind of ones you want and you click keep clicking add and it should shoot it back over here and then you click continue and here's your output window for that so I added in um, these other ones and, and you can do it manually it should capture it for you automatically if it doesn't that's okay you can go back and do it manually so this is the percentile um, ranks right so to have a car in the upper percentile you need to have it be this much money in thousands right okay so for your lab what I want you to do is create a sample survey dummy data so stuff that you're making up asking the following questions um, so sex so maybe do like half male half female age make it variety but make them old, um, like adults so like 18 to 30 ish right and the marital status do one for single two for married and three for divorced and then for the math skill level I would say do it on a scale from 0 to 100 and and give a pretty good diverse skill set to the participants so you can have some people having like a 59 and 87 and 14 right um, don't get too crazy because you want to have some data that you can see there do keep in mind that you want to at least have 30 participants and you need to code marital status and sex as nominal data um, and then using this data you created, right, so again, this is not information that you're gathering from people, but just information that you um, created yourself, determine the math skills needed to be in the, in the 60th percentile, right, and then send me a screenshot of that for your lab.